The last review of 2024. A little bit surreal. Let's get into it. Before we do get into it, these hoodies still available. I bought a hundred. I had a hundred delivered to me. We sold 50 in three days. So thank you so much for the support. It means the absolute world to me, which means that there's 50 left. There's no XLs left. They're um, gone. They sold out really quickly. There's a, a few, I think there's nine smalls left and I bought more mediums and larges. They want, they run pretty big anyway. This is a small uh, and you can see it's it's a bit um, it's a bit big on me. So uh, get there before they all go. Um, I appreciate you all and thank you for your continued support this year. It's been the biggest year on this channel, uh, and you know Instagram and, and all that sort of stuff. So I could not have done it without you. And and I'll make a uh, thank you video a little bit later, um, and a reflection video. But let's get into this match review. So last night's game was indicative of our twenty twenty four. You know, play gets stopped because of uh, lightning, and it was just a bit of a roller coaster. The the footy gods didn't even want Collingwood season to end, and that last quarter was it went for like over an hour or something. So it was nice to just sort of be at the MCG for a little bit longer than we needed to. Final siren was a bit sad, um, but it was so nice to see. And look, I don't, I don't begrudge anybody leaving early because of the rain and, and all that sort of stuff. Because it was pouring down. So when the when the match got delayed, um, but the people who sort of stayed and and um, you know for the final siren, it was like it was it was very surreal. Um, the Collingwood chant went up. The boys came over to the uh, to the cheer squad. It was very loud, very passionate. We, we've got the best. We've got the best fans in in the whole in the whole AFL community. Like, tell me another team where you miss out on finals and the fans stay, the fans rock up. Like there was fifty five to sixty thousand there yesterday. And most of them were Collingwood supporters at a Melbourne home game because Melbourne fans weren't even rocking up to see their team off. I know you had a shit season, but um watch your team play. You're not going to see him for another six months. This is going to be the longest six months of our lives leading up to um, round one, 2025. Um, so it was nice for everyone to, to rock up, watch the boys play in torrential weather, torrential rain, the lightning. It was an experience, that's for sure. Um, but it's ended and that's it. And what a way to bow out of 2024. Now, yesterday's game, it annoyed me and it made me happy at the same time because, you know, in our preview, we said, let's just throw caution to the wind, take the shackles off, you know, give me some high scoring, fast, exciting football. And that's exactly what we got. And it's just like, you know, a part of me says, why couldn't we see this for most of the year? We would have won a lot more games. And, you know, that's naive of me to say because, you, it's the last game of the year. It's a dead rubber. Melbourne had a bunch of players out. They're not really playing at their best. So you can't play like that um, for most of the year. You can't sustain that. Um, but it was very good to see. It's, it's nice to see that we can play that 2023, 2022 attacking style of football. You know, Craig McRae came out and said that, you know, we, we've been trying to, trying to play like that from round zero, from opening round. You could see it a little bit throughout the season. You couldn't see it a lot of the time. But yesterday's game was um, a little bit different. We scored a lot from intercept possessions. I think it was our best differential from um, intercept possessions, scoring from that for, for the whole entire year, which is really cool. So that was our 2022-2023 game plan. Um, it came a little bit to fruition. Um, we got our DNA back in these last two games, a little bit too late, but but that it is what it is. Um, lots of marks inside 50. It was just really fun, exciting football and it gives me it, it gives me hope for 2025 that we can be that team again that can compete um but it's also like september's going to be boring without collingwood in there you know nick dacos doesn't get a finals with penelbury doesn't go into finals again um and we're going to be watching finals and i think craig mccray uh, came out and said it after the game um we're we're going to be watching finals with a real sick feeling in our stomachs that we're not there. And it was a bounce of the ball. It was a handing of the ball back to the umpire. It was 
um, you know, two draws, a loss to St. Kilda that probably shouldn't have happened, four losses in a row. You know, all these all these things culminated in us missing finals by a game at least. Um, and if we, you know, we were gaining momentum and that, that game against Melbourne summarised what we've been building towards and it was just a little bit too late because imagine playing that style of football in finals. We could have won it from eighth. Could have, would have, should have. Didn't. Going into this game, like I said, I wanted to see a couple of things. We talked about, um, you know, that fast attacking football, but we named a bunch of kids and I just wanted to see how they went about it. And I'll, I'll admit it. I'll, I'll be the first to admit it. I haven't seen a lot of Will Parker and what the coaches sort of see in him. Um, I know, you know, he's playing off that halfback, so it's a bit of a harder role. Um, he's only had this one sort of season to sort of get into it after being a Cat B rookie. But yesterday, I thought he, obviously it was his best game for the club. But now I could see what the coaches saw in him. It was amazing that he got his first goal in a couple of bounces, run, gun, goal. Um, he was great off that half-back line. He's got a really good kick and hit a target really well. Um, so I, I really, I, I, my eyes were open. My, I saw the light and I saw what Will Parker uh, could do. And I saw why he was touted as a top 20 or first round uh, draft pick. And I like him. I really, really do. And, and it gives me, uh, gives me hope for the future uh, of that of that sort of half back line with with a little bit of people sort of getting older and stuff like that, um, and he's not one of those one on one sort of defenders. He can hold his own a little bit. Needs to put a little bit more size on. But I thought his his run and gun off that half back line was great. Reminded me a little bit of John Noble, just with a little bit more efficiency. Um, so I really liked that. Ed Allen, this guy is best twenty three. Are they going to do an opening round next season? Let's just say round. Oh, no, they probably will. So, Ed Allen, best 23, opening round next season. I loved what he had to do. Let's look at his stats. So, 21 disposals, nearly 400 meters gained, three clearances, six tackles. I thought, you know, he Ed Allen debuts. At, oh, it's so weird. Ed Allen and Will Parker debuted in that Fremantle game. We have all of our forwards go down. Ed Allen has to play uh, undersized full forward. Um, for that game, and then we obviously draw that game. Then he comes in um, to this game and just plays plays his soul out. Like he's had a really good VFL form, and then comes in and performs like he's been in the team uh, the whole year. So I love that, and I love that um, they're really backing these kids in now. And you can see that he's he's sort of that natural successor. I remember side bottom. Um, I think it might have been last year, talking about Ed Allen being his successor on the wing. I like that, that he was chucked in the guts a little bit. Um, he's really quick. He even scored his uh, a goal, his first goal in, in AFL footy as well, him and, him and Will Parker, which is uh, really nice. There was a little bit of play, I can't remember if it was the third or the fourth quarter, where it was the VFL boys linking up. It was Will Parker, Ed Allen, Joey Richards, and I, I'm... I'm sure it was Finn McRae in there as well, just sort of handballing to each other uh, and running the ball up the ground. So that was nice. Finn McRae started as the sub. Uh, I don't think he did a lot. Yeah, so he had um, 11, 11 disposals, kicked a, kicked a point, um, one tackle, and he had he had over 50, 50% um, time on ground. So Finn... Didn't really impress me as much. Um, I thought Charlie Charlie Dean held his own down back. You know, I know we're looking for like Mark Keane and, and these sort of guys to sort of come in as a defender. But I think Charlie Dean, with another preseason under his belt, he can be that Nathan Murphy replacement. Obviously, you can't replace Nathan Murphy because Nathan Murphy um, is the GOAT. But he can be that guy um, to, to fill a gap. A little bit more agile than, than Billy Frampton. I still love uh, Frampton, Frampers. Maybe we change Billy Frampton into um, a big forward if we can't find any key forwards going up and have Charlie Dean and have Mark Keane or, or some other defender um, come in. I think that's a really cool idea. And then Joe Richards uh, did some really nice things. He kicked the goal, didn't he, Joe, Joe Richards? He did some, um, yeah, he kicked the goal. Did some really nice things, 19 disposals. Um, I just hope he stays. I really, really hope he stays. He's really smart. He's got that small forward Alan Didak IQ in the forward line. Um, 
So I really hope he stays. I really hope Collingwood even offers him a three-year deal because he is Elliot's natural successor. Um, and I, I want to see more Joe Richards. And I, I'll be spewing if we get these kids go for, for peanuts to, to other clubs, only for them to excel at other clubs. Would be remiss of me not to speak about the Dacos brothers. 80 disposals between them. This is... So the Brownlow is going, going to go down to the wire. We know that. I have a feeling that this is a Josh Dacos three-vote game and a Nick Dacos two-vote game, and this could determine if Nick wins the Brownlow or not. Um, it was so funny because they were looking for Nick Dacos at every opportunity that they got. Kicked two goals, one. Uh, it's nearly 700 metres game, nine clearances, uh, 40 disposals. That's just crazy. And then Josh Dacos is the same. 40 disposals, um, three clearances, 500 metres gained. What I love about Josh's game at the moment, and we said this a while ago, or maybe a month and a half ago or something like that, I said, or we said, um, I want to see Josh Dacos off the halfback line. We need someone with elite ball skills off that halfback line, and that's Josh Dacos. I know he's not a, a, a defender, but he is that guy that will be like the quarterback. There was so much talk of moving Pendlebury to that halfback line to be that quarterback. Unfortunately, we still need him in the middle because he's Pendlebury. But Josh Dacos was doing everything right. Uh, still side bottom. He's got to play on next season. He's got that contract ready to go. Uh, he did a great job on Viney. He's becoming a tagger at 33, 32, 33. He's becoming a, a tagger, Bernavide tagger, which is really cool. Patrick, Patrick Lipinski played his best game for the season. Lipinski annoys me because he can play so well and he just doesn't do it consistently enough but he's got two goals did well you know nearly 500 meters gained 30 disposals just has to do that consistently not 30 and 30 and two goals but just has to keep that form up consistently i just think that it was a really really good game in in general and it's just a spew it's just a spew that we don't get to see this team in finals um every other team in the final will be licking their lips because we, we're not there because we can cause absolute fucking damage. Um, but it wasn't to be. It absolutely wasn't to be. And that's okay. These things happen and we move on to 2025. Last thing I want to talk about is that Pickett hit on Darcy Moore. Um, Pickett cleans up Darcy Moore with his um, shoulder into his head. Darcy Moore goes off with a concussion. Uh, I think Pickett gets three to four weeks for that. Um I know Darcy Moore's falling, but the onus is on the player that's attempting to tackle or hip and shoulder. Um, they need to keep the other player safe. This has been all year, um, and Pickett's um, record doesn't help him at all. So I think it's I think it's a bit more of a holiday uh, for Pickett. I dare say three, at least three weeks for me. But this is it. The final match review for twenty twenty four. She's all done. 2024 is all done. Get ready. There's going to be so much more content coming out. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of AFRW content coming out. You know I love the girls there. Um, that's going to be fun. Off-season content. I've got a few things in the works. So stick around. It's going to be a long off-season, but it's going to be a good off-season. Trust me. And get your hoodies. Link down below before they all sold out. But until then, like, comment, subscribe. Tay family, tay friends, tay pets. And until soon, double checkers. I'll sweep you later. Go!